Hello everyone and welcome to Dutch Greybeard. This channel is all about my journey into fantasy. Before I started reading fantasy this last January, I only read literature. I had read some fantasy, but not much. So this last January, I watched the Wheel of Time show on Amazon, I think it is. And that struck me like, well, I want to know more about this. This is so fascinating. So the Wheel of Time was my entry point, if you will, for my journey into fantasy. Now, since I've been reading fantasy, I've come across Brandon Sanderson about every day on Booktube. His name is all over the place and probably rightly so. But up until recently, I had not yet read any Brandon Sanderson. Can you imagine that? So this video is about my first experience reading Brandon Sanderson. Usually when I pick up a new author, I buy his or her entire works. That's what I mainly do. But that's really a bit impossible, uh, considering that I've come across so many new authors since January. And it's really impossible. Well, it's possible to buy all their books, of course, but I need some walking space and living space in my apartment. I mean, it's completely stacked with books already. So I made one rule for myself. I've got one bookcase in which I can store my books to be read in the fantasy genre. One bookcase. And if that's full, I am not allowed to buy any more books until I've read a few and some space opens up. Only then am I allowed. As you can see in the picture over here, my bookcase is pretty, pretty full at the moment. So because of this firm rule of mine, I have not yet bought the entire works by Brandon Sanderson. I've limited myself. This stack of books so far, Arcanum Unbounded, Elantris, the first Mistborn saga, the second Mistborn saga, with the exception of the last uh, title. I'm waiting for a mass paperback to be printed. Uh, Warbreaker and, of course, the four uh, books in the Stormlight Archive. So that's my entire uh, Brandon Sanderson collection at this moment. In my sub-journey into Brandon Sanderson, I follow the reading order which was recommended by Captured in Words. This booktuber made a fantastic video in which she explains which order would be the most recommended if you want to experience the Cosmere to its fullest so that you don't miss any references. And that's what I would like to do. So. He recommends to start with the first book in the Mistborn series, The Final Empire, which I just did. And then he recommended reading The Eleventh Metal, one of the short stories that's uh, bundled in the Arcanum Unbounded book. Uh, then read on with The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages. Now, for this first time reading Brendan Sanderson, I wanted to make a vlog. Uh, I started out doing that. Starting the first day, after about 100 pages, I made a first one, then after 250 pages, the second. But then, unfortunately, something happened in my family, which took up a lot of my time for about three or four days. I did not find any time to read. So the reading vlog somehow didn't work. I will insert some snippets of the videos I made during my first days of reading this book. But at the end of this video, I will share my overall reading experience of my first time reading Brandon Sanderson. At the moment, I'm almost finished with reading Winter's Heart, the ninth book in the Wheel of Time series. This is how far I am. So it's about 40 pages left, uh, which I'm going to read in a minute. And then finally, I'm going to read Brandon Sanderson. It's very hard to get around Brandon Sanderson. And I'm looking very, very much forward to start reading this, which is going to happen today. Initially, I thought I'd be starting in publication order, so I would be starting with Elantris. But according to Captured in Words, that may not be the best starting point if you want to 
have the full Cosmere experience and all the Easter eggs and references in the books. So, in about an hour time from now, I'm going to start Brandon Sense and the Final Empire. See where it takes me. Hi there, we're back again on my reading vlog concerning the first Mistborn novel by Brandon Sanderson. I haven't had very much reading time yet, but I'm up to page 128. And I must say the first 30 or 40 pages, I was thinking, well, what's the Brandon Sanderson hype now really about? I mean, his writing style is, well, a bit bland to be honest. He's not a poetic writer. He doesn't use very much elevated prose, to be honest. It's pretty straightforward telling his story. But once you get into the book and you start uh, to become acquainted with the world a little bit, with the allomancy, magic with uh, metals, then you are sucked into the story. There's no other word for it. You are sucked into the story and who cares about prose from that point on, really? You just want to keep on reading. She's just been made aware of her ability to work with all the metals and she doesn't know anything about it. So Kelsey still has to train her. I'm at that point where she has to start her training. So that holds big promise. Anyway, so far, I'm sucked into the story. I finished reading The Final Empire just two days ago. I admire Sanderson's skills as a storyteller. Every bit of information reaches the reader in such a natural way that you are hardly aware of how much information you're processing while the story takes you under its wing. The whole magic system of allomancy and ferrochemy, if I pronounce that correctly later on, takes some pages to get used to, of course. But gradually you simply know which metal does what and what the difference is between a misting and a mistborn. Nowhere did I get the feeling that I was missing out on something important, even though Sanderson never overwhelms you with too much information. I underlined a lot of pieces of text just to pause myself to let new information sink in fully. And nowhere did I have to reread pages in order to understand what was going on, like I regularly have to do in The Wheel of Time. Sanderson's timing and the amount of firing information at the reader is just perfect. At some point, around page 140, I understood that Vin is special, even for a Mistborn. Regarding her ancestry, I even speculated that the Lord Ruler might play a part here. On page 187, I even asked myself if Vin perhaps is his daughter. I've heard so much about Sanderson by booktubers or by the man himself, that while reading The Final Empire, I found myself speculating on the Sander Lounge. This most certainly fueled these and other speculations I had during my reading time. At the end of the book, we know who her parents are, but that somehow doesn't fully explain her special abilities as an allomancer. How much as I love the books in the Wheel of Time series, Reading them can sometimes feel like a chore. I find myself taking a small break after finishing a chapter because of the density of Robert Jordan's prose. With The Final Empire, it was just the opposite. I'm hardly aware that I'm already well on the way in a new chapter. Just want to keep on reading. Much of the fun of reading Sanderson lies in the fact that he keeps you alert he never gives away everything, but just enough to keep you intrigued. And just when you find you've got the whole picture, he throws something new at you. To say this in Sanderson's own words, plots behind plots, plans beyond plans. There was always another secret. Sanderson is an absolute expert in this spoon feeding of information. 
I like the banter very much between the characters and also the characters themselves speak to me. The way Ham or Hammond always tries to look at the philosophical point of view is very entertaining. As well as the likeable arrogance of Breeze, everyone is believable. Even though the ending of the book was very good, I'm not sure if I've already experienced the famous Sanderlunch already. The story wraps up very nicely, with one major surprise. But it didn't throw me off balance or anything. What I appreciate is that very big questions still remain unanswered. The wrapping up is not that complete. I'm very eager to continue with reading the second book, The Well of Ascension, which I started just doing yesterday. So this was my very first Sander experience, and it was a very good one. I'm not quite sure if I would rate this book five stars out of five. I don't do that very often, but I'm thinking about it. For now, I'll leave it at four and a half point stars out of five, which is very good, of course. But maybe later on in time, it will climb up to the complete five star experience. For now, thank you very much for watching this video. Until we meet again at Dutch Greybeard.